We were so glad to be invited by the center to share information about ARENA EMDR. So my name is Terry Keener. I am a licensed clinical social worker and an EMDR therapist. Um, I was the behavioral health coordinator at the Vegas Strong Resiliency Center for a period of time and got connected with first responders and the Route 91 community in the center in that way. Um, currently, I'm in private practice. I do EMDR in the office, but my favorite place to do it is in the arena. And my equine specialist partner is Laura Higgins, and I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, I'm Laura. Um, nice to meet everyone. I am an equine specialist. I've been a horse trainer in Las Vegas and a riding instructor for 25 years. Got into equine assisted therapy in 2012 been doing that full time for about five years. Um, really enjoy the, e the arena EMDR, doing that with Terry and one of my other therapists. Um, we just see great results and uh, it's very rewarding. Okay. So doing arena EMDR, we use what's called the an equilateral protocol. It is an EMDR protocol that's approved by EMDRIA. This is our training co cohort, a picture. You can see uh, a little bit of the um, horses that were used also, one of the large horses in the background, and then she had a couple of minis and a, a donkey um, in the herd that we worked with. So this was our training cohort. Sarah, our trainer is, uh, I'm not sure how, she has a straw hat on kind of toward the middle. And, um, we attended together. You must either be both an equine specialist and an EMDR therapist, or you must attend as a team together. So Laura and I and another therapist attended together. It is an experiential treatment modality, and it um, has all of the science and um, all of the science behind it that EMDR has. So we know that EMDR is typically a treatment for trauma. So what is trauma? Most of you are familiar with, at least to some extent, what trauma is. Sometimes it's very recognizable. Sometimes it's not quite as recognizable. So basically, you know, when a traumatic incident happens and, and it's fully processed, it's linked to positive, useful information. So we learned a lesson. We are able to recognize shifts in our body and emotions. We remember how strong we are, that we got through it, and we know how future act actions can be guided. So processing a traumatic experience means that we make sense about, of it and we're not disturbed by it any longer. So that's what happens. Sometimes trauma does not get stuck. It does not cause us, cause us ongoing difficulties. Uh, it may be shorter term, and this is what happens when it is something that's processed. EMDR is helpful when we have an unhealed trauma or something that was overwhelming to our system at the time and did not get fully processed. So it's not filed in our brain correctly. It's stored in a very chaotic way. The parts of the memory are stored in different places or in different, not, not all together as a cohesive memory. And EMDR is very good at helping us identify those overwhelming experiences and process, reprocess them so that they can be filed in the brain as being in the past and they no longer disturb us in the present. I'm still trying to keep an eye on the chat. So these are some of the things that present as concerns from trauma or other things in people's life where they might benefit from EMDR. So I don't know if anyone would like to make a note of any of these things that they've experienced or noticed in others um, or have any questions about any of these types of symptoms or concerns. Uh, some that we hear a lot are, you know, that sense of numbness, because when we have to shut off feelings, we end up shutting all of them off. It's hard to shut, you can't just shut off one of them. 
Um, also, you know, the exaggerated startle response. Um, a lot of these actually we hear, we hear as we talk with clients. So with arena EMDR or equilateral, we inter interactions and exercises with the horses are woven into all eight phases of EMDR. We'll talk a little more about the eight phases. Some of you are already familiar with them, but we do get a lot of questions about like, how do you put these two things together? And essentially what I tell people is anything we can do in the office with EMDR, we can do out in the arena. And we actually have more material available to us and a more natural environment that often feels more comfortable and relaxed to people. So it is using clinical best practices and it is a partnership between the horses, the therapist, the equine specialist and the client. We thought we would introduce you to the herd. These are some of Laura's beautiful, amazing horses. newest member of the herd. So I will just mention that any of the um, people that you see, have, we have their permission to use their photos. And this is actually Dean, who I believe is on the call with us to tell us, tell us, talk a little bit about his experience with an arena EMDR intensive. So Dean, please feel free to jump in anytime and give us um, additional information. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, all right, well, hi guys, uh, ladies. I such a warm feeling to see you. So it's very cool to see you. Um, my name is Dean McCauley. I am a professional firefighter up here in Seattle, Washington. Um, I'm now a fire marshal for investigator and I've been in line of duty for about 20 years. Um, I was in Route 91, I was a concert goer uh, multiple years. I was, I don't know, roughly 20, 25 feet in front of the stage uh, when um, the shooter opened up from the 32nd floor and kind of changed a lot of our lives, not kind of, but very much did. Um, and did some media stuff on 2020 and Good Morning America, and then did a documentary with Discovery, and then just recently did a film called 11 Minutes with uh, Jason Aldean, Stormy Warren, and uh, uh, DJ Silver, and a few others, Natalia, who I was credited with saving, and um, uh, just the ability to just say what I just said was not, um, it was not possible up until about a month ago, two months ago, a month ago. How long ago was it? A month ago I was down there? A little over a month. It's been about five or six weeks. Yeah, about five, six weeks ago. Um, I spent the last five years waking up every morning, um, just really struggling with, uh, you know, in my own, my own situation, not, not only the trauma that I've dealt with in the fire department were a fairly busy department but you know childhood trauma a bunch of other stuff um and then you you throw route 91 on and it's uh it just really it was self-destructing and uh first responders firefighters I'll speak for um you know we don't take the job with the idea that we ever need to be helped uh, we do the helping, and uh, I definitely do not like being in a hospital situation. I don't like doctors uh, 
I have issues with most doctors. That's my own, <laughs> but I don't like to be analyzed and I don't like uh, uh, somebody sitting across from me and writing a bunch of stuff down that's going to hurt my promotability or my ability to keep my job. So um, the Las Vegas resiliency, uh, it, Terry reached out to me and asked me if this, if I was ready for this. Uh, at this point, <clears throat> I already went down a lot of drinking and a lot of other tried to do trauma therapy, but I was able to trick the trauma therapist and uh, counseling. I uh, went through a horrible divorce, uh, just really self-destructing on many levels um, from the outside. The guys I worked with could see it, um, but I just couldn't, couldn't get myself out of it. So basically jumped into EMDR about six weeks ago. And, um, you know, I was at the point where I would just try anything. Um, as a kid, I grew up around horses. Um, so I'm fairly comfortable with them. I was born in Montana. I had two horses. And um, <clears throat> I know that you can't trick a horse. They pick up on your energy and they're uh, very in tuned to what's going on with you. So um, I loved it. It was, it was amazing. We're outside. It's, for me, it was three days of just straight uh, EMDR and um, Terry already knew a little bit of my background, so uh, we could jump into it, but uh, it, it's unbelievable what it did for me. And I hate to use the term, it gets into the science of the brain uh, because we associate that phrase with COVID these days, the science, but it really is the science of the biology um, of what is happening in the brain. So, um, yeah, I do not wake up every morning seeing the people that I did not save or the mistakes I made that night. Uh, I was able to let go of the shame that I was feeling. And um, I do not walk into buildings with the same anticipation. I'll always look at exits, but um, I'm not sizing up everything, thinking that, uh, you know, looking to get my son out of there or uh, get myself out of there and I don't have the same dark thoughts. And what I was most worried about was, will it, would it go away after a week? You know, I'll come back from Vegas and come back from the horse ranch and uh, Z was my horse and thinking that I needed my support horse with me. And um, it, it just, it's still with me. And uh, I'm still able to talk about it and process it. And I'm very, very happy with doing it. And I'm very uh, grateful and whatever I can do to help get this across the nation to the rest of the fire and police or first responders, I'd be more than happy to help. Thanks, Dean. Appreciate that. I'm sure there'll be other questions for you as we go. Okay. I'm on duty just by, uh, just let you know. So if I have to roll, okay. I got to roll. I'll, yeah, if you do. I'll, I'll try and stay put. <laughs> okay, let us know. Yeah. Yep. You bet. So basically, you know, EMDR uses the adaptive information processing model, which we've kind of talked about. So when memories get stored maladaptively with unprocessed material, uh, that's when it causes us some difficulty. And EMDR loosens up that frozen memory network, helps us reconfigure and rebalance so that. We, the memory is linked with more adaptive information. That adaptive capability is present in the brain, but it sometimes gets frozen or overwhelmed by our experiences. So some of the ways that horses help um, gives, first of all, it's experiential. Dean talked about being outside rather than in an office across from someone who is taking notes or analyzing. Um, you, it supports affect tolerance. So when things become difficult, um, there's a lot more available to you to help support. Uh, we are social beings and so are horses. So they offer social engagement, safety, and connectedness. Um, and we talk about herd behavior versus pack behavior as one of the things that um, goes along with equine therapies. It's a relaxed environment and um, also helps people to stay present and centered so that the part of the brain that we need for the healing is available. Some of the advantages of doing EMDR in the arena. 
it's um, ex again, experiential. It bas bypasses some of that verbal filtering when we turn the horses out and talk about what do you see, what's going on with the horses. People are describing their perceptions and their views of the world, but it's in a less threatening way, a more indirect way. Um, you develop trust, connectedness, and confidence. You heard Dean talk about his horse, Z. Um, it's amazing to see the connection that happens between the person and the horse that, that they choose out of the herd. Do you have anything to add, Laura, on any of these? We well, you know everyone's pieces? experience is different. Um, their energy is different. The horse's energy is different. And it's great to see people connect and be able to um, lean on that horse, whether it's for emotional support or just presence. Um, it's just great to see. So the phases of EMDR history taking uh, treatment planning and preparation are in phases one and two. We want to start planning for, uh, you know, as soon as we can for both the process. Um, what Dean did was intensives. So he came and spent two and a half hours with us in the morning, two and a half hours in the afternoon, did that for a couple of days. And then the third day spent another morning with us. And that's how he completed his process. Uh, Terry and Laura, if I may just jump in there real quick, mm -hmm. um, touching on that. Uh, I love those pictures, by the way. Thank you for using them. Uh, anytime that I'd go through a breakdown, every time, anytime that the stuff got pulled up that I didn't even realize uh, it was, it was buried in that mess in my brain. Uh, Z, the horse could pick up on it. I could break down. I could cry, which I would never do in an office in front of a doctor. Um, and I'd wrap around Z and Z would wrap around me. Our heartbeats, our breathing would sink. Um, it was just a very, very safe. I don't know if it was because it's such a, a large creature or maybe it's because it's not a human being and I'm worried about being judged. Um, but there's just such a, a, a safe connection, including the air and the, and the everything that's happening outside uh, it's you know it's pulling from all the se all the senses um but the the connection with the horse the breathing uh being able to sink and being able to have a breakdown with the horse completely different than sitting in a chair or sobbing like a seven-year-old um it was a very very safe and it helped it helped the process tremendously um i just want to share that with you guys thank you so we'll skip ahead a little bit and show you a little bit about what Dean's talking about. So in this particular moment, I'm he's doing eye movement. I'm standing in a place where he can see me and I'm moving my fingers so that he can do the eye movement, but he's also hugging the horse. Yeah. So just a little bit more about the phases, phases three and four. Um, with EMDR, we're actually asking the brain to have dual attention to the past and the present. And with the horses, that becomes even more possible. Let's see, it looks like maybe Yvonne, Yvonne has a question. Yes, and I think you answered it. Um, so my question, I was started to type it in the chat, but I think that you're answering it with this last comment. So you are doing the hand eye, um, you know, movement, you and I'm just curious. So you are directing the, the entire like you're thinking about this traumatic event and then the, the horse is that additional support. Is that correct? And And so when when Dean was talking about, oh, I was feeling emotional and the, and the horse picked up on it right away. So he's getting extra comfort from this animal. And then also he's doing, is that, is that the way it was going? I'm sorry to ask. I don't know if you're going to do it in the presentation. No. I just trying to understand. No, that's a good question. And that's exactly right. So these three pictures show some different ways of doing the eye movement. Um, this, my nephew is in the top picture helping us out. 
So he's standing with the horse and I'm moving my fingers back and forth. In the middle picture, Dean and I are standing on opposite sides of the horse and I'm tapping on his hands and that uh, cues the eye movement. He can have his eyes open or closed while doing that. Another way of doing it is while walking with the horse. Does that answer your question? It does, thank you very much. Yeah, sure. So in phase five, we strengthen the adaptive material. And this is another, sometimes I'm not sure which is, a, this is one of the demonstrations of how the eye, eye movement is done. Um, if you're familiar with EMDR, you know we do a body scan to see if there's any lingering disturbance in the body. And as you know, Dean was willing to share with you, there were times when there was was disturbance, um, but he actually moved all the way through um, to where he no longer felt any of that disturbance. Each session ends with um, helping the client return to a state of calm and present, being in the present moment, whether or not you complete processing. If you complete reprocessing and, you know, if you have a, an intensive, there's more of an opportunity to complete. But if you're doing an hourly session, you may or may not have that opportunity. And then, of course, reevaluation is always done as well. We love pictures of the baby, right? And the mama. So let's see. It looks like, so this is a little bit of, um, so this is some video that Dean was able to do at, at the very end of completing his intensive. Counseling. I've done therapy. I've done trauma therapy. Um, EMDR is itself different because it's actually there's so many associations brought to it. It's literally working with two parts of the brain. It's building a bridge. Um, it's pulling up memories that has the ability to pull up these memories that I didn't even know were there. Um, feelings, associations, stuff that everything from guilt to um, anger to sadness that I was living in that uh, was being incorporated in my everyday life. I had no idea. This EMDR is so much more different because, I mean, I'm not designed to sit in an office. I'm not designed to just sit still. It's, it's outside. It's, uh, it incorporates all the senses. It's, you feel the air, you, feel, you get the vitamin D, you feel the wind, the smell of the horses. And then most importantly, you're with a horse. For me to go through some intensive therapy with a horse um, that, you know, any any day could take me down, uh, but just wants to love me. And that's the feeling I got. Like it's this creature that is picking up on my energy, I'm able to go through this eye process, this uh, physical process with this horse and be able to, when I would hit something, I would have a breakdown that they could wrap around this horse and it's breathing would get synced in the mind and um, it would hug me. To be in this situation where you're going to the most vulnerable parts of your your your, your soul, um, and to be with a creature that has nothing but you know love to give to you and patience and can feel where you're at. I mean, my horse uh, Z was like 
very in touch, very in tuned to everything I was feeling from the very first day. Um, even walked up to me, he chose me as much as I chose him. And it was just a, a very, very special uh, experience that you're not going to get in an often. I got it down here in Las Vegas at EMDR and Stable Arena. Comments or reactions to any of that? Hopefully you were able to hear it. It was a little bit difficult. We did have some, we were outside with some noise in the background. Okay, not seeing any. I wrote in the chat, um, thank you to, to Dean for explaining to us how this process worked for you. This is my first uh, time hearing about how horses can be incorporated into EMDR. And I can imagine how comforting this experience was with the horse um, and just all that the two of you are doing with this. It, it's fabulous. I, I wish that um, I was closer in region to be able to uh, you know, point people towards you because you know, it, it looks fabulous. It really does. And you get a really good, very good video of explaining it. So thank you to both of you. Thank you. And I, I think Dean did an excellent job of um, explaining it. And, that, you know, again, that was immediately after completing. Um, I have some additional video, but since Dean is here, um, we did a follow-up call um, a few weeks later. And we talked about that question of, you know, the concern you had about whether it would last and, um, I really liked what you had to say about your son noticing uh, the changes in you. Would you want to talk about that for a minute? Yep. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, my, my biggest fear is obviously what Terry just said was uh, having it disappear. Um, you know, like you're riding a high or uh, it's, it's a drug or a medication and um, because I'd come back from regular counseling or trauma therapy and it, you know, last a day or two, and then I would be right back to where I started. Um, it wasn't until uh, a few weeks afterwards, I, you know, I have um, my son and I, I help coach his baseball team and we got that done with baseball. And uh, right now, every dollar is counted in our house and, you know, we live a pretty tight budget. And uh, I asked him to step away from my, my truck when he got out because he's got his baseball gear and a bat in the back of his uh, uh, backpack. And he did not do that. And he swung his bat right into my truck. Um, and it's a, it's a newer truck, <laughs> um, not brand new, but new to me. And uh, I just looked at him and I said, Colin, uh, you know, step away. And I got out of my, I was in the driver's seat and I went over and took a look at it. And I said, listen, I, I don't need to be right. I'm, I'm trying to help you when I give you direction. And, uh, and, and he was just, he had a blight, you know, like any 10 year old would, he thought I was gonna unload on him. And I said, so step away and let's go inside and make some dinner. And about an hour later, we're making dinner and he makes dinner with me. And, he goes, dad, I really noticed something since you got back from Vegas. Um, you know, and he's a, he's an only child and he's been through a divorce and he's kind of a little old man, you know, two years of COVID being stuck with his dad rolling around fire stations and whatnot. Um, but he said, I, I noticed, he goes, I, you aren't, you aren't as reactive. You don't, uh, you're a lot calmer. You're a lot more peaceful. Um, and it meant a lot coming from him because you can't hide stuff from kids and they're so authentic. Um, so that, that was a really big moment. 
Uh, I've had two other friends do EMDR. Uh, one was trying to do EMDR, like uh, space it out over three months. And I had another friend of mine, a very close friend of mine, like his sister did EMDR and she was in a helicopter crash up here on airlift. And uh, it literally changed her. Uh, it, it basically saved her life. Um, so I had two people really pushing me to do it. After I got back, um, you know, both of them were very inspired uh, with the whole idea of being able to do it outside with the horse and the environment. Uh, the other friend is a, a battalion chief and uh, with a lot of, lot of trauma. Um, but both of them were able to go, my gosh, what a, what a fantastic idea. Um, so just, you know, I can't say enough about it. I, I'm open for questions. I'm, if any of you guys have any questions, you can find me. I'm, it's not hard to get a hold of me. Uh, Terry knows very much how to get a hold of me. Um, but whatever I can do for the first responder community that, um, you know, I know how we work. We, we don't like to be judged. It's blood in the water. If uh, somebody at work uh, knows something is up or we're off, um, it's hard to answer questions because we don't want stuff permanently on our record. Um, there's just a lot, of, a lot of fear involved with us getting help. And that's what we have to do is we got to shift. Um, we got to be the, the beginning of this, to shift that culture and recognize we're not superheroes. We're just people uh, who love to do a job. And what you guys offer down in Vegas, it was worth every dollar for that plane ticket. And, um, you know, it, it's priceless. It's it's really, really amazing stuff. And I'm grateful every day. I wake up now very grateful. I miss my horse. So I'll come down and see Z when I can. But anyway, it's uh, it's great stuff. Any questions for Dean or? I just, I just have a question. Um, I chatted with Dean privately, but um, what, What's the difference in effectiveness between, you know, I mean, I own my own horse, but I don't know how to do EMDR. So going, I can go and have my horse and I could have my dogs listen to me and I'd rather be with animals than with humans after all of this stuff. And the difference between the effectiveness of the intensive versus, you know, finding somebody that does, I mean, we have clinicians up here in Reno that do EMDR, but I don't know of anybody up here that does arena EMDR. Um, I can, I can just give you like, so I, I've grown up with animals my whole life. I have a great Pyrenees at home. Um, uh, it's kind of become my, my therapy dog and I grew up with horses. And I think that, I think the difference, at least I'll speak from my, my perspective is you, as you may know, you don't hide anything from animals and animals, uh, at least horses and dogs don't judge you. They just want to take care of you. And it builds, uh, kind of a psychology safety net. Um, that really helps bring down those walls. And I say that because I sat for a year in trauma therapy and I, I mean, this trauma therapist is noted, writes books. Um, it was almost like a, huh, this just kind of hit me, but uh, that Goodwill hunting, it was kind of like that. It was like, I found myself playing a game and analyzing her. Um, and I, and I, it was just kind of a joke. And then when I got out of it and she said, well, it looks like you've got this handled. Um, at the, at the same time, I was, you know, waking up going, I don't want to live anymore. Um, so where, where the horses and the, uh, where the horses came in for me, where Z came in for me was, um, I could have a full body breakdown, but I, like my head would get so tight and it would become so jammed even when I was going through the EMDR down in Vegas but the breathing of the horse the sensation the the touching that would take all that energy somehow they they absorb your energy 
and it, I felt the energy, like I felt my hips and my back and my jaw and my head lightening up, like becoming lighter so I could actually think or I could actually see more and I would experience more of what I was buried. I didn't even know it was there. I mean, as Terry knows, like she probably has a documented somewhere, but I was dealing with trauma from Route 91 from that night that I had no idea that I had suppressed um, that it was living into my every day. But every time I'd start to go down that moment, instead of shutting it out, I would grip onto Z, the horse, and I could feel the horse breathe. And my attention would go away from that moment, bearing in that moment, to feeling Z, feeling the horse's breathing, um, smelling. Those other senses come into play to where it would free me up allow me to be safe. And then I could go back into that scene again and start to process and recognize for what it was. You know, living, living in that situation of, you know, I, I'm completely transparent here. I was just living in the moment that I ended up killing a girl um, that I was working on because I didn't save her. And I was going to find her family and apologize and in fact, that's not what happened. I didn't fire those shots. Um, she died with me and I died with her. She died with me and she didn't die alone. And um, that's, that's how it ended. And, and now it's a very peaceful memory. So I didn't know that. I didn't know that was there. I didn't know I was living in that. But my actions every day, every morning, I was living in that. You know, my, my intensity, my physical uh, my body was carrying that tension. My brain, the front of my mind was carrying it and it would come out in uh, aggressiveness and intensity and shamefulness. And, you know, I, I would cry in private. Um, so is the horse really allows you to go to those places, takes away 100% of your attention, not 100% of your attention, but takes away enough of your attention to be safe, to continue to process all the way through it i i hope that helps you yeah but that's the the therapist is the one that helps you um you know i can go and and cry and feel shame and guilt and responsibility and all that stuff with my horse but it's the therapist that helps you realize that you didn't shoot those shots you were there for that person and it helps yeah. you like not so my question is like number one is is it more beneficial to do an intensive where you can like move through that process a lot quicker or um is it just as beneficial to have an emdr therapist that um goes through the the process and then I just connect with my own horses separately or do I need to find an EMDR arena in northern Nevada or do I need to fly to Vegas or what you know what I'm saying yeah 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 I, I follow what you're saying yeah it's it's a balance of all you know um you know I, I don't want to take anything away from you know all three of my therapists, I say, you know, that's, you know, the two ladies you see standing before you and that horse, um, you know, because it's a balance of all. It's for me personally, having a human being that's asking me questions or walking through my story with me um, was good. It was fantastic because they play as much, you know, yes, very, very important. But for and me, they have to be um kind of first responder competent you know what i'm saying yeah we, there's definitely we a in different... nevada peer support network always vet our clinicians for uh first responder proficiency if you will so yeah. you I... know so we're not causing secondary trauma to the therapist I, yeah, I'm glad you said that. I actually had a therapist fire me uh, for that reason. Uh, she broke down, couldn't take it, and said she was done. 
Um, and that was traumatic in itself because I was really feeling like my my stuff was too much for her. It's, you know, then how the heck am I going to get through this? So um, that's interesting you say that. Um, and, and it kind of plays into what, what I'm saying, which is the being outside, wrapping around a horse, a different sense being triggered allowed me to relax and breathe. And that scene I was just telling you about, I had no idea how deep that went. Um, I knew there was some frustration, but I had no idea I was living in guilt and shame. I was, I, I, if I was to talk to anybody about it, I'd be frustrated and angry and mad, but I didn't realize I was feeling shame. And where the horse comes into play is I could stop, Terry would stop, I would wrap around Z in the moment, I would breathe, take a two minute, three minute time out uh, in the safety of the horse and outside and then we'd go back into it and it would allow my brain I'm just going to say go into a relaxed state so we could pick up and continue again um, all three play a, a very very important part in the process it like I said I I, I had a therapist fire me <laughs> I use that loosely it's kind of a little comedy there but said that she couldn't do it anymore um, I had another trauma therapist who's written books that said I was cured uh, or fixed enough to move on with life and get back on the engines and go run calls um, and you're absolutely right there's not every therapist or counselor is designed to hear what we have to say um, because we're trained to trick people i mean our one of our sayings is we are handling organized chaos um fake it till you make it we'll figure it out um we don't inside we know we don't have the answers but it's our job to build the confidence of the public that yeah we'll and it's the old adage it. suck it up buttercup you know what i mean yeah and yeah, don't, sure. don't show any weakness because then you're going to be fodder at the firehouse dinner table yeah there's a there's a really good book out there called i love a firefighter and in that in that book it you know they talk about the, how we handle stuff we jump back in the rigs we jump back in the engine and we handle it with humor and laugh and poke in each other and we don't learn how to cry and talk i did a cpr on an 11 month old baby uh, a mom handed me her baby and when I went running in and I did CPR and I worked super, super hard and um, I lost the baby and, you know, I came back out and I'm in my engine and I uh, immediately put my sunglasses on and started putting my kid away and just wanted to be left alone because I didn't want anybody, I didn't want anybody to think I was weak for the rest of the shift. You know, uh, and then I then I went home and poured myself a glass of gin and, you know, um, you know, dealt with it like how a lot of firefighters deal with it. And right. That, and you go that, down the emotional rabbit hole. Right. <laughs> Instead sure. of processing it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the EMDR. That, you know, that's what it did is I, I was forced to spend three days of processing one night Route 91 and something I've lived in for five years and I, I was carrying stuff I had no idea uh, of guilt um, trauma that came when I came home one of the biggest pieces of trauma that they're able to pull out of me that I didn't even realize was the trauma that I dealt with my own union and my own firefighters uh, with some abandonment issues that were you know from my own childhood but were I was feeling it with my own guys because they could not relate and they could not understand. So they would not talk to me. Plus they saw me on TV and that, that's, that's a no, no with. Oh yeah. That's pie and ice cream, baby. It's it is. And, and that's what I want to get away from, which is like, Hey, we, uh, uh, those old adage that was created out of the Vietnam era firefighters. That's done. We're done with that. We are human beings. We have families. Our divorce rate is over 70%. Well, um, and look at the suicide rate. You suicide know, rate. It's crazy. Yes. And I was, I was right there. My, 
my uncle is a highway patrolman and I'm the one who got the phone call that he came home from shift and ate a bullet. Um, mm. So it's, you know, it's, mm. it's ingrained. And yeah. I, I, I promised myself, like, yeah, I told Terry this and, you know, Laura, this, uh, like, it, this was my last, this was my last straw. I need, I would do anything. Just give me something because right. I'm not going to make it. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great conversation. Thank you guys so much. You're um, really getting into some important stuff. Uh, we, so I guess part of the way I might answer your question is that, you know, when you combine EMDR with the horses and it's facilitated with the trained um, therapist and certified equine specialist, that whole formula, like I think is kind of what Dean was saying, that whole formula makes it work. Um, and it is a very specialized training and we take it very seriously. And um, we do a lot of our work is with first responders, military veterans and others in similar um, emergency personnel type careers. There's a couple questions in chat I wanted to get to. Um, question about the body scan and explaining that a little bit more. Essentially, you know, Dean talked a little bit about how much of the trauma was stored in his body. And we want to access that when we're doing this work because we want to clear that. And when, if there is still disturbance in the body, when we do this work, we know there's still more work to do. That's one of our cues. And so as uh, we complete a process or we um, work through a memory, we ask Dean to do a body scan himself. And so he simply, we ask him to start at the top of his head, notice everything, go all the way down, see if there's any disturbance that seems related to what we're doing. And if there is, we have some more work to do. If there's not, then he's, he's actually had the ability to complete that reprocessing. Then there's a question for Dean. What would you say to other first responders that are skeptical of therapy in general that would help them get a good idea of how ARENA EMDR could help them? Um, that's a really good question uh, because I'm actually dealing with that now. Um, I've addressed our board, board governance, our three city mayors, our six council members and multiple firefighters. Uh, on this and I'm trying to come up with really the right phrase, but, um, you know, it's like when we go to a fire, when we go to a scene, we're all in. And this, this is, I have to, I have to take this from my high school football coach. Um, you're all in, put both feet on the court and play hard, give it a hundred percent and see if it works. And that's the only way you're going to know if it works for you. Um, what do you got to lose? You know, you, you your old life is waiting behind you. You're, you know, if um, if you're afraid to lose that identity, and that that was the other thing it was like a lot of us don't want to lose our identity. Our identity is wrapped up in being, you know, a firefighter. My my son thinks I'm a hero. Um, for my son to sit there and see me get drunk and cry uh, was the worst day of my life, and. It, it'll get a lot worse if you don't get on the court and try something and give it 100%. And that's something the first responders do really well at is, you know, pretend it's a structure fire, pretend it's a CPR. You don't go in half ass. You don't go in one foot out, put both feet in those bunker boots, pull them up, get 100% in and take it on. You have nothing to lose. Um, that's what I would say. Like you have nothing to lose. Okay, thank you. And then someone asked again for the name of the book you were referring to. Oh, it's uh, it's called I Love a Firefighter, and it's a, a psychologist or a therapist. I think a psychologist who went around and lived in different firehouses, um, and writes the book on that. Uh, a battalion chief that I know actually hands it out to all the new hires uh, once their spouses. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, that was my bad. <laughs> my technological difficulty. That's all right. There's a battalion chief up here that hands it out to all the new firefighters and has their spouses read it. Uh, there's another one called I Love a Police Officer. Uh, I obviously haven't read that one, but 
the firefighter one is pretty good and uh, it's pretty accurate on kind of how we deal with stuff. Um, but again, it's not solution based. And I'm at the point in my career and my life where, you know, as I tell my son, come to me with your problem, but come to me with some possible solutions. And, you know, I, I would say to any firefighter I was inquiring about trying to make themselves better and help others around them, um, you know, this is a possible solution for you. So Thanks. do you guys have a peer support team up there in Seattle? We do, um, but you know, here's the deal. I, you know, I reached out um, when I really started spinning out and I could not, you know, our peer support team is like in my, my group here at my fire department, it's three people working mostly off duty or off duty, they're off duty oh. firefighters. Yeah. Uh, but there's a main consortium person that's available. But when I need help, when a firefighter first responder reaches out to a therapist or reaches out and makes that phone call, we don't need to be put on a waiting list. Exactly. We don't need a phone back next week. We don't need a phone call tomorrow. I need it right now. Right. Um, because for us to get to that point, uh, we're already at the end of our rope. We're exactly. not, we're not, you know, we're not, we're not 90%. We're right. 99.9. And by the time someone says, I'll get back to you next Tuesday and hopefully we can get somebody to take your insurance. Uh, yeah. You might as well just write us off and order a casket. That's just, it's not, it's not good. Right. Sorry for being so graphic. Appreciate your honesty, Dean. We love a firefighter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Just a little bit of information about some of the feedback that we, we received. And then um, we have some FAQs. We've probably already talked about a lot of this. We ask about your experience with a horse, but it's not required that you have any experience with a horse. Whatever level of comfort you have, we will work with. Um, how is it different than in the office? Only that it's applied in the arena outdoors with horses in a completely different setting and that you have both the uh, therapist and the equine specialist present. Riding is not involved. Observation and ground exercises are used. And um, I think we've already kind of talked about some of these questions as well. What makes it right for you? If, you? if you're feeling stuck, if you're having trouble moving through difficult material, if you like being outdoors and in a natural environment, and if you prefer something experiential and active, or if you're feeling alone in the process. And again, it, we've already talked about how it's facilitated. Just a few more pictures of the helpful herd. How old is Sultan? He's about 11 weeks. Oh my gosh, so cute. He what? is adorable. <laughs> He's a lot of fun. Dean got to work with him a little bit individually and I let mom and baby do a group session with some um, active military and veterans yesterday. And that was really fun. That was Sultan's first group session. <laughs> and he was actually interacting more with the participants than, than his mom was. So it was pretty cute. I love it. Yeah. So we really appreciate everyone being here and your attention and your questions and the opportunity to share uh, something that we really uh, love to do and love to see the benefits of. Um, we do have a website where you can find more information. The QR code on the screen will take you to the website. Uh, we do have a Facebook page and an Instagram uh, where we post some of our information, but um, you're welcome to reach out to us for anything additional. We want to be respectful of your time. It is a little after 2.30. Does anyone else have any questions or comments before we finish up? Thank you for putting this on. You're very thank welcome. You. Yeah, and thank you for the opportunity. Thanks for being here.